This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. We've heard about the polar vortex. Dangerous and deadly polar vortex. The polar vortex. This weather event is called a polar vortex. Is the polar vortex caused by climate change? No. Now let's ask some better questions. Like what actually is the polar vortex? Because seemingly nobody in the press understands what it actually is. And secondly, has the frequency of cold air outbreaks associated with sudden stratospheric warmings changed in the presence of anthropogenic climate change? Or more bluntly, is this cold weather caused by climate change? To begin with, this is not the polar vortex. Neither is this, or this. This was the polar vortex. I say was because that's what it looked like at the start of December. The polar vortex is a feature that forms in the stratosphere every winter in both the northern and southern hemispheres between about 20 and 80 kilometers above the surface. It's a circulation of seriously strong winds that go around the pole in the middle atmosphere. In a way, it's the largest storm in the world, the size of a continent, that naturally forms every year, rotating around the pole. Just to reiterate, this isn't at the surface. You are not living through the polar vortex, or in the polar vortex, or in the time of the polar vortex. The polar vortex is a big zonal circulation in the stratosphere that forms every year. That's all. So what does it have to do with weather at the surface? Well, every now and again, about seven times every decade on average since the 1950s, it tears itself apart in an event called a sudden stratospheric warming. And I made a video explaining that process the last time that that happened in March 2018. This time around, the vortex split apart around Christmas time, and this had a bunch of knock-on effects on the atmosphere closer to the surface after a couple of weeks. Again, this is explained in that video in much more detail, or alternatively, you could read my thesis on the subject. But crudely speaking, in the aftermath of a sudden stratospheric warming, the mean latitude of the jet stream moves further south. The jet stream, if you remember, is the narrow, fast-moving river of air in the lower atmosphere, which separates freezing polar air from warmer mid-latitude air. The jet stream waves and wiggles around, and whether it's north or south of you largely determines if you experience warm or cold weather at the surface. Do you remember warm weather, Mr. Frodo? After the polar vortex experiences a sudden warming and splits apart, the jet stream moves further south, and the wiggles in it get bigger. That allows for freezing arctic air to spill further south than normal, and we see the kind of extreme cold in the mid-latitudes that we've seen in Europe, and to a much greater extent in America. I'm sorry, what? So the real question you should be asking is, is the stratospheric polar vortex tearing itself apart in a sudden stratospheric warming more frequently now the climate is warming? Was this weather event made more likely by climate change? Let me explain why the answer is yes, and then I'll show you why the answer is no. The polar vortex is caused by a combination of the thermal wind effect and the temperature gradient between the pole and the equator. The bigger the difference in temperature between the pole and the equator, the stronger the polar vortex will be. And the stronger the vortex is, the less likely it is to undergo a sudden warming and split apart. Now, while the global average temperature is increasing due to human interference with the climate, it isn't happening at the same rate everywhere. The poles are warming much faster than the rest of the world, an effect called arctic amplification. So the temperature difference between the pole and the equator is getting smaller, leading to a weaker polar vortex, which undergoes sudden warmings more easily, leading to more frequent outbreaks of extremely cold air. The last such outbreak was less than a year ago with the beast from the east, and so you might argue that we've already seen an increase in frequency of these events. Two events in less than two years is more frequent than seven in ten years. But you'd be wrong. This big paper was headed up by Dr. Blanca Ayatha Guena, and it looked at changes in the behaviour of the polar vortex predicted by a number of complex climate models forced by anthropogenic climate change. Using a variety of metrics, the paper found no evidence of statistically significant future changes to the behaviour of the vortex. Hey Vsauce, Editing Simon here. Just wanted to interject because something I didn't mention when I filmed this video is that not all scientists will agree with the conclusions of this paper. There is a minority view that sudden warmings will get more frequent in climate change. I think that this paper is correct, and full disclosure, I used to work with Blanca at the University of Exeter, but just for completeness, I thought I'd mention that. Also, uh, that the jet stream might get wavier under climate change in general, but that's not what this video is about. I'll leave a reference down there if people are interested, but um, this video is about linking the 
current cold snap to the recent sudden warming and clearing up the confusion about the polar vortex. So, okay, that's it. Back to the video. No changes in the frequency of sudden warmings or changes in the strength of the vortex. And to quote the paper, the analysis of other features of sudden stratospheric warmings besides the mean frequency supports the key finding of the study. The anthropogenic forcings will not affect sudden stratospheric warmings over the 21st century. This may seem a bit counterintuitive given what I just told you about how the equator to pole temperature difference forces the polar vortex, but remember that nothing in the atmosphere is truly simple. There's a multitude of different phenomena talking to each other, interacting in complex ways, and climate change forces them all in different directions. For example, the surface temperatures under climate change are increasing, but the temperature of the stratosphere is is actually cooling, and it may well be that just those two phenomena cancel each other out as far as the polar vortex is concerned. It's also worth noting, as the authors do, that we only have about 50 years of observations of the polar vortex, which is why it's dangerous to draw conclusions about the frequency of sudden warmings, because we just haven't seen that many. It may well be that the past 50 years are anomalous and have loads of sudden warmings for some reason, and so that will skew the conclusions of the paper. But that's all the data we have. For the time being, we just got to wait and see what happens. For the time being, science indicates that climate change doesn't increase the frequency of sudden stratospheric warmings, and therefore the most recent sudden warming in December was not made more likely by climate change. Categorically saying whether a particular weather event was caused by climate change or not is pretty much impossible, but in this case we can be fairly certain. The current extreme cold resulting from the sudden stratospheric warming and breakup of the polar vortex in December is part of natural variability, rather than having man-made origins. For once, we didn't actually cause this particular frozen mess. If you're currently trapped inside due to the extreme cold, then you're going to have a lot of free time on your hands. You've already spent some of that time learning about the science of why your front garden resembles Hoth, so why not dive deeper and learn more about the science on Brilliant.org? In particular, you might like to check out their Out in Nature chapter in the Physics of the Everyday course, which teaches you about the physics of the world around you through solving problems and encouraging you to learn from your mistakes. There are courses on maths, science, and computer science at a variety of levels. And if you're stuck inside for a long time, then don't fear. There are daily problems on Brilliant, which get you to stretch your logical and scientific thinking skills. Come out of the polar vortex-enforced shutdown smarter with Brilliant by going to brilliant.org slash simonclark, and the first 200 of you to do so will get 20% off your premium subscription to access their seriously cool courses. Thank you for watching the video. If you found the science in this one interesting, then definitely check out the video I made last year about sudden stratospheric warmings. And if you like the way I make my science videos, then there's a playlist of them down here. Check the description for links, citations, and footnotes. And thank you again for watching. I'll see you next time. Shout out to my phone for being my hair light. Pixel 3, it's a bloody good phone.